Hello, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and from unboxings.com and here I am with the Huawei U8800 another new device from Huawei again with Android and this one again also has Froyo or Android 2.2 the IDEOS that they launched about a month or two ago proved to be pretty uh, interesting and a lot of people like the handset but wanted something a bit bigger with a similar sort of, um, sort of form factor and performance as the IDEOS and uh, it, it might be that we find that with the U8800 but this is the handset itself obviously come back to that in just a second also in the box we have a series of accessories so we have a headset, a wired headset which uh, is pretty straightforward it's a four pole, three and a half mil jack one end, uh, length of cable and then a very basic inline microphone with a push button and then headphones themselves which are uh, kind of basic lightweight plastic style um, sort of in here but uh, I guess you'll probably want to use your own headphones and then we have a USB to micro USB sync charge cable and a second USB to micro USB sync charge cable and then a USB style power adapter, obviously this one is European with the two round pins but clearly once available in the UK obviously have a UK plug so notice that there isn't a manual or warranty or anything like that inside the box because this is a very early handset um, it is full sort of in terms of retail if you like uh, in terms of specification but uh, we obviously have a very early model so let's peel off the screen protector there that it's shipped with so on the front first and foremost we have a pretty large display it's 3.8 inch 480 by 800 pixels or WVGA capacitive touch screen very generous size and it, there isn't much of a, a bezel around the outside so um, with a 3.8 inch screen it's pretty economic in terms of handset size loudspeaker on the front couple of uh, sensors proximity and uh, ambient light sensor also touch sensitive buttons underneath so back menu home and search looking to the left hand side very straightforward up and down volume control push buttons on there on the bottom tiny little hole which is the microphone and then the micro USB connector for sync and charge on the right hand side absolutely nothing to see completely clear of any functions buttons or ports connectors or otherwise uh, power button on the top and then the three and a half mil headphone socket there for obviously using your own headphones or the supplied wired headset on the back we have a five megapixel autofocus camera uh, which is a little exposed if, uh, if I was to be critical um, just sticking out the back as it does there the reason for that is obviously that the camera itself does take up a bit of room rather than make the whole of the back a little bit thicker it's easier just to have the camera itself stick out the back there is a little bit of a uh, raised area around the lens but I think that would be slightly prone to scratching but obviously have to be a bit careful with that there is an LED flash and then a reasonably large loudspeaker grill next to that back cover slides off like so uh, and back is very much a plastic handset so plastic back cover large battery which uh, I'll try and pop out there we go so it's a large battery it's fairly slim but uh, fairly meaty 1500 milliamp hours so a decent capacity not particularly heavy which is good sim card goes in the space here and the micro SD card underneath there luckily we can replace the micro SD card without removing the battery but we obviously have to do, do have to remove the back cover but the sim card needs to be removed to replace the battery uh, to, or the battery has to be removed to replace the sim card rather so let's see if we can power up And while we wait for that to come on, run down the specification. Quad band for GSM, dual band for HSDPA. It will roam in most places throughout the world. As I say, 3.8 inch display, WVGA 800 by, uh, 480 by 800 pixels, which is decent. Uh, capacitive touch screen. We don't know what the uh, processor is, but I suspect it will be either 800 or 1 gigahertz. Um, the specification that we've had through from Huawei doesn't mention the processor. It does tell us that uh, it has 512 meg of ROM and 256 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty decent. 
uh, two, uh, Bluetooth 2.1 with A2DP support, has built-in GPS and a, with a GPS support, uh, G-Sensor, and uh, actually it has got 4 megabytes of internal store, uh, 4 gigabytes of internal storage, which is excellent. The micro SIM card, micro SD card rather, does support up to 32 gig, which again is excellent. Video camera, or the camera on the back, will record at 720 720p so HD video recording is possible the web browser does have flash support which we'll take a look at in a moment USB 2.0 um, compatible connector on the bottom and Wi-Fi supports 802.11 BG and N standards which is again fantastic also this handset is the first Huawei came that it is the first um, in the world to have HSPA plus which is um, offers apparently a very extreme download speeds, something like 14 uh, megabits per second which uh, I think is something of a record so uh, why don't we just wait for this to power up bearing in mind this is the first time this handset has been powered up it is a, a fresh boot from, from cold so um, it does take a while to come on uh, a few minutes certainly but every time you boot thereafter it's, it is obviously much much quicker Okay, I did actually stop and start the recording there because it did take about four or five minutes to uh, go through the first boot sequence, which, uh, as I say, is only a one-off when you first power on. So let's unlock and take a look. A very, very familiar-looking Android um, layout, really. No customization um, from Huawei, which is both... Um, well, I suppose it depends on your point of view. It's a benefit in that uh, whenever... Android is updated, so when it's updated to 2.3 and obviously later 3.0 and so on, um, this handset should be able to um, be updated very quickly without any um, tweaks or anything from Huawei uh, in terms of any uh, user interface or anything else because it is a very vanilla build of um, Android. So that's a benefit in that respect. But if you like um, overlays such as HTC Sense overlay or anything like that, then perhaps you might be somewhat more disappointed. Uh, but then there are some third party options. Um, so looking here on the, the main screen, obviously we have um, the Google search with also voice search and the camera contacts messaging and market, Android market icons. Pushing the middle button at the bottom will bring up the main list of applications. And looking in here, we look like it looks like we've got some, some somewhat more unusual things here. Uh, first thing that strikes me is the file manager, which is not uh, not normally seen. GPS to Google Earth is also an interesting thing there. You've got layer, navigation, latitude, uh, YouTube, obviously Twitter, uh, Richpad, and a few other bits and pieces there, which we'll take a look. Or oh, high space also. We'll go back home and we'll take a look around. So we can swipe around. We have a number of um, screens or pages on the desktop, if you like. So we have a music player and Android market application or widget. Uh, and a blank page and then we come back the other way and uh, something that's trying to connect to the internet which we'll see what that is in a moment so we have basically five pages that we can customize with applications and um, so that's fairly decent and pretty standard really uh, if we push the button at the bottom we can get the settings menu up and go to the settings menu and turn on the Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi is on and it is scanning so let's see if we can set up a Wi-Fi access point it doesn't seem to be able to pick one up which is a bit of a disappointment I have noticed over the last well certainly few months of doing handset reviews and unboxing videos how inconsistent the uh, performance of handsets are in terms of Wi-Fi this one seems to be struggling to pick up a Wi-Fi network despite me having three available and one of them probably about 12 feet away so that's a bit disappointing that's not picking that up whereas other handsets are a lot more um, capable of picking up a Wi-Fi network so uh, let me just move out of frame and see if we can pick something up okay in turning the Wi-Fi on and off again we seem to have cleared the problem so we do have a wireless network available which we'll go ahead and connect to uh, while I do that, you can see that we have a sort of fairly standard looking hands, um, Android keyboard or QWERTY keyboard. 
But you'll notice this in the corner here is that we have swipe. So the layout is pretty straightforward, but it's a swipe um, keyboard, so that's pretty decent. I mean, it's not going to really help me type in a pass key, but it is pretty cool if I rotate the handset. There we go, the screen does rotate to give me a much larger QWERTY keyboard in landscape mode, but let me go ahead and put in the key. Okay, and there we go, we've connected up and disconnected apparently. Connecting. Let's see if that connects back up on its own. That's pretty disappointing in terms of Wi Fi performance. Let's turn it off and on again. So, our Wi Fi performance doesn't seem to be the best, which is somewhat disappointing. And we'll hope for a ROM upgrade, maybe, to solve that. So attempting to turn Wi-Fi back on now is resulting in an error, so uh, well, let's hope Huawei do update the ROM on these handsets before they do actually hit retail, I'm sure they will, um, but we will report this as a bug obviously, so we'll come back out of there. Might have to call our, cut this a little bit short because um, many of the things I wanted to demonstrate as part of this uh, unboxing and demo video do require an internet connection unfortunately, so uh, there's not an awful lot I'm going to be able to show you in here, frankly, um, because, as I say, we wanted to show you the web browser and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, I suppose the only thing I can really demonstrate in any way is the camera. It has a decent camera interface, as we can see there. And we've got different modes for uh, stills and also video. We've seen still mode, and then we have these little buttons down the side. You can see there to turn on things like, well, GPS is one of them, settings is another, you know, settings menu, auto white balance, auto flash, and also the zoom. But uh, we can take a take a shot there, which obviously we can't do on Android when we don't have a uh, micro SD card, which is a bit of a bit of a shame. I always find that a bit of an annoyance with Android handsets. But let's just take one more attempt at turning the Wi-Fi on. Proof, if you like, that we always do things completely live and completely on the fly. So let's see if we can turn the Wi-Fi back on. One more go. No, it's still resulting in an error. Well, if we can get this working, we'll come back with another demo video and we'll look at many of the applications for you, uh, Google Maps and uh, obviously uh, the browser and a few other things, and we'll try and demonstrate Flash on the browser. Um, but for now, well, this has been the Huawei U8800. Bear in mind this is uh, pre-retail and uh, we are actually using a pre-release ROM. We will try and get that sorted out before we do our full, full video and review, which will be on site on tracymat.co.uk very soon. In the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt or facebook.com slash tracymat.co.uk. Back soon with some more videos and reviews, but for now, thanks for watching.